Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the different types of chemical reactions that happen in the body. We'll start with an explanation of metabolism and the difference between anabolism and catabolism. I'll follow that with how chemical reactions fall into those categories and the different types of chemical reactions that we find throughout the body. I hope that you follow through to the end of this video and that by the end you have a much better understanding of what chemical reactions are and what type of chemical reactions happen in the body and why. Let's talk about chemical reactions. A chemical reaction is a process in which a covalent or ionic bond is formed or broken. A chemical equation used to show a chemical reaction typically shows the reactants on the left and the products on the right. The reactants must collide in order for the reaction to occur. The term metabolism describes all the reactions in the body, and virtually all metabolic reactions depend on the solvency of water. A lot of times when we think about metabolism, we think about how high is our metabolism so that we can lose weight, right? Is our body uh, using things fast enough? Because if we can burn more calories than we take in, then our metabolism must be really high. But metabolism, which is all the reactions that are occurring in the body, actually is composed of both catabolism and anabolism. Catabolism includes the reactions that are needed to break large molecules into smaller ones, while anabolism is going to include the reactions that build complex molecules from simpler ones. So as you can see, metabolism includes all the chemical reactions that are occurring in the body. These include both building up of molecules and breaking down of molecules. Now there are certain specific types of chemical reactions that we're going to talk about next that can fall into these categories. Now the best way to remember the difference between anabolism and catabolism for me is that I think of Anna builds. And when I think of Anna builds, it helps me to remember that anabolism is the building up and then I can remember with that that catabolism is the breaking down. So let's get into the types of chemical reactions. We're going to talk about four different types of chemical reactions. One would be catabolism, two would be anabolism, and then we're going to talk about two others that occur throughout the body. Now again, this is building the basis for anatomy and physiology because these are concepts that are going to come up again later on. So the first type of reaction would be a catabolic reaction or taking large molecules and breaking them down into two or more smaller ones. This type of chemical reaction is referred to as a decomposition reaction. It is also referred to as hydrolysis. Now, this type of reaction actually uses water to break down large molecules into smaller molecules. And because of that addition of water, that's why it's also referred to as hydrolysis. So decomposition refers to the fact that we're going to decompose, right? We're going to take these larger molecules and make them into smaller molecules. Hydrolysis, that name is referring to the fact that water is going to be used in order to break these molecules apart. So hydro being water, lysis being breaking. So we're going to break them apart. So if we look at um, what I've drawn here, what you'll notice is that there is a dimer initially, okay, and this is just giving you an example of how this is going to work. So we're going to take a large molecule that's connected by the addition of water, and most decomposition reactions are also going to require energy in the form of heat, light, or electricity. And then we're going to break that dimer into monomers. Now get used to this term monomer because you're going to hear it a lot. We're going to talk about monomers of specific large molecules later on. But monomers are going to be that smallest building block that's going to be really important throughout anatomy and physiology. So we're going to take that dimer by the addition of water and energy, we're going to break that dimer into monomers. So now instead of having two, we're going to have uh, two together, we're going to have two separate ones. Okay, so we're going to break that down. 
Another way to look at this type of reaction is to look at the fact that we had two together and then we're going to break that down into two separate ones. So again, we're taking a large molecule and we're breaking it down into smaller pieces. This type of reaction is referred to as an exergonic reaction because they are going to release more energy than they absorb. The next type of reaction that we'll talk about is an anabolic reaction. This reaction is referred to as a synthesis reaction, also known as dehydration synthesis. This type of reaction is the opposite of a decomposition reaction. In this type of reaction, two or more small molecules are going to combine to form a larger one. A synthesis reaction is the opposite of a decomposition reaction. In this case, we're going to have two pieces, two monomers, and we are going to build them up in this anabolic reaction. And so in this case, instead of adding water, we're actually going to be removing water from these monomers in order to put them back together in a dimer formation. This is also why it is referred to as dehydration synthesis because of the removal of water to put these pieces together. Anabolic reactions are usually endergonic because they absorb more energy than they release. Also, another way to look at this reaction would be A plus B gives you A B. So again, an anabolic reaction building up, taking smaller molecules and making them into bigger ones. The next type of reaction we're going to talk about are exchange reactions. Many of the reactions in the body are actually exchange reactions. This is where two molecules are going to exchange atoms or groups of atoms. These reactions consist of both synthesis and decomposition reactions. They are also referred to as double displacement reactions. In my classes, I like to refer to them as a double date gone wrong. This type of reaction looks like this. Let's say you start with molecule that has AB and then the other molecule has CD. What happens is they actually switch partners, hence double date gone wrong. What's happening is that the bonds between A and B and C and D are breaking, that's a decomposition reaction, and then new bonds are being formed, that's going to be the synthesis portion. Now this happens because uh, they, their partners each have a higher affinity for the other one, and so they actually swap partners here, resulting in an exchange reaction or a double displacement reaction. The final reaction that we're going to talk about are reversible reactions. As you've seen in the other chemical reactions that we've talked about, many of them proceed only in one direction, and you can tell that from the way that the arrow points. However, reversible reactions can go in either direction under different circumstances, and this is represented by a pair of arrows that show that the reaction can go in either direction. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that it's helpful to you as you go along in your studies uh, with anatomy and physiology. I'm going to continue to make some videos that are going to help you. If you have any comments or questions, please make sure to drop them below. Thank you.